Well, in, 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 the, in Iran, during uh, Mohammad Mossadegh's uh, premiership, and his government was removed, and this is now documented, was removed by the CIA. And it was uh, because uh, an independent-minded prime minister came and took over in Iran and wanted uh, to, to make policies for the interest of the people of Iran. And so we all, you know, the, uh, we, we all know what happened to him. You know, there was this, first of all, there was this um, uh, campaign, uh, propaganda campaign against him in the media. Then it was uh, the opposition parties were paid to do uh, demonstrations against the government of uh, Pre uh, Prime Minister Mossadegh. And then... And then the, his own party members were given money to change party affiliation. And eventually, it was the, uh, the, the final one that was the army which removed him. So it was a very similar uh, pattern followed uh, in when my government was dismissed. But, you know, let me just talk about Iran. I find that it is most important for a country to live with dignity and self-respect. I mean, that for me is the most important thing. You know, we Muslims, uh, you know, uh, our oath with the Almighty is La ilaha illallah. There is no God but Allah. It gives us dignity, self-respect. We, you know, we are not supposed to bow in front of anyone but the Almighty. And the Muslim countries, you know, when they become subservient or when they become client states, when they lose their dignity, you know, and unfortunately, in Pakistan, we have suffered from this. I have found the Pakistan's foreign policy, vast majority of the people of Pakistan have found it uh, very undignified because we have relied on aid and we stretch our hands and we get money or we, or we fight other people's war and then, you know, we participate. A lot of our own people die in this and, and, and we, we do it for foreign aid or U.S. dollars. And I think... You know, it has consequences for a society. Number one, the con society never learns to stand on its own feet. Because only when you stand on your own feet, do you realize your strength. But when you're always having crutches of foreign aid, just because, you know, you're trying to serve someone else's foreign policy objectives, you lose your dignity. And for me, uh, I, the people of Iran might have suffered, but, you know, they haven't lost their dignity. They, they, you know, we, we will disagree with, you know, maybe what their worldview is. We might disagree with their worldview of Islam. But, you know, you cannot disagree with them standing for their sovereignty. So, you know, I admire that about them. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. Our next question comes from Maryam Khan, who is a PhD candidate at Istanbul Sabahattin Zaim University and also a research associate at SIGA. Um, Maryam, are you there? Um, Assalamu alaikum. Um, it's really a pleasure to sit in front of you. Um, I am personally a voter of PTN and I'll, I'll be ever. Um, my question is regarding Afghanistan. Uh, it's been after two decade long war of U.S. against Afghanistan. Taliban have turned to power now, which wasn't supported by leftists in Pakistan because they, they saw them as a source of terrorism. Now, we Pakistanis are again uh, facing a wave of terrorism and Islamabad is on high alert. So how do you uh, see the Taliban in Afghanistan and how do, do you think that this, the current security uh, threat which Pakistan is facing now uh, is has something to do with um, Af Afghan Taliban also. Also, you have supported a lot of, um, you know, laws like blasphemy law and uh, religious religion-based laws. But on the same time, you have uh, criticized a lot, a lot of religious parties uh, which were in the coalition. So how do you see the role of religion in the politics? Thank you so much. Okay, so first of all, you must differentiate between the Afghan Taliban and the Pakistan Taliban. The Afghan Taliban are completely different. You know, their aims and objectives are completely different to the TTP, which is, which is the Pakistan Taliban. Who were the Pakistan Taliban? 
when the Afghan jihad was conducted uh, from the soil of Pakistan, uh, it was conducted to what was called the tribal areas of Pakistan or FATA. Now, these were areas adjoining uh, the Afghan border. And all the sort of uh, incursions into Afghanistan by the Mujahideen were from the tribal area. And a lot of the fighters also from Pakistan were, were, were from the tribal areas. And there were Pashtuns, which were the Pakistani. You know, you must remember, Afghanistan is 50% Pashtun. And uh, two-thirds of Pashtun live in Pakistan. And, and most of them along, uh, along the border, the eastern border of Afghanistan. So therefore, there was a lot of Pashtun sympathy for, for, for the Afghan jihad. So, uh, uh, hence, from the tribal area, the border adjoining Afghanistan, that's where the fighters used to go in and the Mujahideen used to operate. So when come 9-11, uh, Afghanistan gets invaded by the Americans. Now, Pakistan uh, government took the stand, which I opposed. We should have stayed neutral. They started supporting the U.S. war on terror. And so... The same people who had been fighting jihad against the Soviets because they were foreign invaders now were told that because it's the U.S., if you fight against them, it's terrorism. So they turned against the Pakistan government. And so what we had was the in tribal areas, the people turning against the Pakistan government and they they were called the TTP, the Pakistan Taliban. And so there were two different things. Afghanistan Taliban were were not connected with them. I mean, they were connected vaguely, but not really. There was not real connection with them. So what happened was that after Kabul fell to the Taliban last August, the, the, the Pakistan Taliban were then asked by the Afghan Taliban to go back into Pakistan. And unfortunately, that was a great time for us to... My government was already negotiating with them so that we would do a resettlement of these people because they were about... 40,000 people which were moving into Pakistan, amongst them about five to 10,000 fighters, but their families too. So unfortunately, when my government went, the eye was taken off the ball and the new government and the new uh, and the setup, the uh, military establishment did not pay enough attention to what was happening with the resettlement of this, the Taliban coming in. And so therefore we have this... Uh, wave of terrorism coming in now uh, and this is all along the what was the former fata uh, the former tribal areas because they've got merged into pakistan so we have a wave of terrorism in pakistan right now and this needs to be dealt with before it goes out of hand now i come to you, what you're talking about religious parties and uh, religious laws look let me first tell you about the blasphemy law the blasphemy law was not made by Pakistan, it was made by the British when they were ruling India. And the idea of the blasphemy law was that if one religious community, and remember there were multi-religious communities living in villages, there were Hindus, there were Sikhs, there were Muslims, there were Christians. So if one religious community said something which was derogatory against another religious community of, of, of a sacred entity, so there would be riots. There would be a lot of people killed. So the British then brought in this blasphemy law that you were not allowed to uh, say anything derogatory about any religious entity of any other religion. That's how it came about to stop riots. So therefore, rather than there being lynching crowds and lynching mobs going on and killing people say, who thought that their religion blasphemy had been committed against them, now it was an offense, so you had to actually go to court to prove that. So that was to stop uh, mob violence, lynching crowds. So Pakistan basically inherited the, uh, the, the, the policy. And in Pakistan...